Earth is surrounded by an invisible magnetic field, a shield that protects life from cosmic radiation, solar flares, and high-energy particles from space. But that shield has not always been stable. Around 41,000 years ago, something happened. The field did not just weaken, it nearly vanished. The magnetic poles reversed, the structure collapsed, and for more than a thousand years, Earth was exposed. And it left no runes or craters, but its fingerprints are everywhere. It may have triggered dramatic shifts in our environment, increased mutation pressure, and forced early humans to adapt in ways that still shape us today. In this video, we'll explore how Earth's magnetic field failed, what caused it, how we know it happened, and what it did to our planet. From rising radiation to shifting skies and climate shocks, this was not just a magnetic glitch. It was a transformation. And with the magnetic field weakening again today, we have to ask, could it happen again? And if it did, what would it be like? So what happened to the magnetic field? As mentioned, around 41,000 years ago, Earth's magnetic field did not just weaken. It nearly vanished. Now, I'm not over-exaggerating. Its strength dropped to less than 10% of what it is today. The magnetic poles reversed, but the flip did not last. Instead of settling into a new stable alignment, the field broke down into a scattered, unstable pattern. Instead of one clear north and one clear south, the magnetic field became multipolar, with several weaker poles forming around the globe. The structure was chaotic, fragmented, and constantly shifting. For more than a thousand years, Earth's protective shield was unstable and dramatically weakened. This was not a full reversal like the one that occurred 780,000 years ago. It was shorter but still disruptive. Today we call it La Champs Excursion, named after a lava flow in central France where the magnetic reversal was first recorded in solid rock. And it was not just a local anomaly. The effects were global, and they left lasting signatures in ice, stone, and even ancient biology. We know La Champs Excursion happened because it left behind a global trail not frozen in myth, but in physical record. Scientists have found signs of this magnetic collapse in lava fields, deep sea sediments, polar ice, and ancient trees. All of them tell the same story. Let's start with the rock. When lava cools, minerals like magnetite align with Earth's magnetic field and lock it in its direction. In central France, a lava field from around 41,000 years ago records a full magnetic reversal, but it wasn't isolated. Sediment cores from the ocean floor also show shifts in magnetic alignment during the same time period. These layers reveal that the field did not just reverse. It fluctuated wildly, consistent with a collapse into a disorganized, multipolar state. Meanwhile, ice cores from Greenland and Antarctica reveal sharp spikes in beryllium-10 and carbon-14. These rare isotopes are created when cosmic rays strike the upper atmosphere. Normally, Earth's magnetic field deflects most of those rays, but during Le Champs, more radiation reached the surface. The result? A sudden increase in isotope production. These spikes are so sharp, they stand out like a radiation fingerprint in the ice. And then there are the trees. In 2021, a team led by Alan Cooper and Chris Turney published evidence from subfossil Karari trees preserved in New Zealand wetlands. These trees live during the Le Champs excursion, and their growth rings show a rapid global spike in carbon-14, the same signature, the same moment. Four systems, four types of material, all separated by time and distance, all telling the same story. The shield failed, and the planet felt it. So why did it happen? Earth's magnetic field is powered by a massive engine deep beneath our feet. 
At the center of the planet is a solid inner core, surrounded by a swirling, molten outer core made mostly of iron. As this molten metal moves, it generates electric currents. Those currents produce Earth's magnetic field, a process called geodynamo. It's usually stable, but it is not fixed. Sometimes the flow becomes unstable, current shift, internal symmetry breaks down. When that happens, the magnetic field can weaken, reverse, or fragment entirely. During the Lachamps excursion, that's exactly what seems to have occurred. The strong two-pole system that normally defines Earth's magnetic field collapsed into a multipolar structure. Several weaker magnetic poles appeared in different locations, drifting unpredictably across the planet. Paleomagnetic data suggest that during Lachamps, the poles may have migrated as much as 60 degrees from their normal positions. This isn't unusual in geological terms. Earth's magnetic field has reversed hundreds of times over its history, and short-term collapses, like Lachamps, known as excursions, occur more frequently than full reversals. So what triggers one? The full picture is still unclear. Some researchers believe that changes in temperature or composition at the core mantle boundary may have disrupted the flow of molten iron in the outer core. Others point to chaotic instabilities and convection patterns that can spontaneously emerge from deep within the core. Numerical simulations of the geodynamo support this idea. They show that even small, temporary instabilities in core flow can lead to large-scale magnetic collapse. We may not know exactly what happened, but what we do know is this. The geodynamo can glitch, and when it does, the consequences ripple outward, through the magnetic field, through the atmosphere, and across the surface of the planet. Now let's talk about what it did to the planet. When Earth's magnetic field collapsed, the effects were not limited to compass or navigation. They touched the sky, the air, the biology of life, and possibly even the path of human evolution. With the field weakened to a fraction of its normal strength, Earth's surface was exposed to far more cosmic and solar radiation than usual. Cosmic rays, normally deflected by the field, reached the upper atmosphere in greater numbers, generating high-energy particles that penetrated deeper into the environment. This may have caused ozone layer thinning, allowing more ultraviolet radiation to reach the ground. Radiation levels would have increased globally, especially at mid and low latitudes, where the field had offered the most protection. On a biological level, that means higher mutation rates, increased oxidative stress, and more pressure on immune and reproductive systems. And this radiation did not just affect DNA. It altered the chemistry and behavior of the atmosphere itself. High energy particles ionize the upper atmosphere, which can disrupt stratospheric temperature gradients, shift jet stream patterns, and change the distribution of ozone. Some climate models suggest that the Lachamps excursion coincided with the period of regional cooling, especially in areas sensitive to atmospheric circulation. Other regions may have experienced seasonal swings or increased storm activity, contributing to ecological stress during a time when humans and animals already lived close to survival thresholds. With little magnetic shielding left, the skies themselves likely changed. Auroras normally confined to the poles may have become visible across much of the globe, flaring across the night sky in places where they had never been seen before. But these were not the soft greens of our modern auroras. When solar particles strike the atmosphere in high volume, they can produce deep, blood-red arcs, glowing plasma curtains, and pulsing vertical pillars that ripple across the sky. 
In rare cases, even blue and purple streamers or white flashes like silent lightning can appear. These displays could have lasted for hours or nights, especially during periods of heightened solar activity. For early humans with no explanation and no shielding, this may have felt like the sky itself had changed. The sustained exposure to ionizing radiation would have placed evolutionary pressure on all life. Increased mutation rates might have driven changes in pigmentation, immune function, and even neurological traits, especially in populations exposed to higher doses at lower latitudes. It's possible that this period selected for greater resilience, both physical and cognitive, or in other cases, it may have contributed to extinction. The timing overlaps with major shifts in human history, including the final disappearance of Neanderthals and the emergence of symbolic behavior in Homo sapiens. We cannot say that this event caused those changes, but what we do know is that the stressors were real, the pressure was global, and the conditions were unlike anything before or since. The Le Champs excursion was not just a magnetic event. It happened during a moment of profound transition for our species. Roughly 41,000 years ago, the planet was already shifting. Populations of Homo sapiens were spreading into new environments. Neanderthals were nearing their final disappearance. And something else was happening. Something less material, but deeply human. This is the window when symbolic culture began to flourish. In caves across Europe, Asia, and even parts of Australia, we start to see the earliest known examples of figurative art. Not just marks or scratches, but representations of animals, handprints, and abstract symbols. We also see changes in burial practices, in tool complexity, and in the range and behavior of migrating human groups. Culture was accelerating. Expression was expanding. Something had changed, not just physically, but cognitively. Could the stress of Le Champ's excursion have played a role? It's hard to prove, but the overlap in timing is striking. Environmental instability could have selected for flexibility, memory, or innovation. And sky displays, unlike anything seen before, might have imprinted themselves on the human imagination, shaping stories, beliefs, and a deeper awareness of something larger than survival. We do not need to say the magnetic collapse caused these changes, but it may have amplified them, nudged them, helped shape the conditions in which something new emerged. Not just new tools, but new minds. The Le Champs excursion was not the only time in Earth's history that the magnetic field has shifted. Around 34,000 years ago, another brief magnetic event occurred the Mono Lake excursion. It was shorter and possibly less intense than Le Champs, but it shows that the Earth's magnetic field can stumble again even shortly after recovering. Much further back, around 780,000 years ago, came the Bruni's Matsuyama reversal, a full, long-term polarity flip. Unlike excursions, this was not temporary. The pole switched completely in the new orientation held. And what about now? Over the past two centuries, Earth's magnetic field has been steadily weakening by about 9% overall, with certain regions declining even faster. One of those regions is the South Atlantic Anomaly, a zone where the field is especially weak. It stretches over South America and the Southern Atlantic Ocean. It has already been affecting satellites and spacecrafts. Radiation levels are higher there. Instruments are more likely to fail. Astronauts have reported strange visual phenomena when orbiting through it. Some scientists see this anomaly, combined with the overall weakening trend, as a potential sign of another magnetic shift to come. 
Whether it leads to a full reversal or just another excursion like Lachance remains unknown. But there is something worth noting. The Lachance excursion began during a period of low field strength, much like the one we're in now. It does not mean that history will repeat itself, but the pattern is familiar, and the field is still changing. We tend to think of Earth's magnetic field as something stable, invisible but constant, always there. But the Lachamps excursion reminds us this is not guaranteed. For over a thousand years, our planet lost its shield. Radiation surged. The skies changed. Life adapted. And somewhere in that chaos, the world we know today began to take shape. We still see its fingerprints in the lava, in the ice, in the trees, and maybe in ourselves. The field is weakening again. No one knows if it is heading towards another collapse. But if it is, we've been here before. And last time, it changed everything. Thank you so much for joining me today. I cannot wait to hear in the comments what you think about everything. And until next time, take care.